Hey everybody, it is your boy Captain Hunter, aka Big L PhD. I am a recent uh, PhD uh, conferee, uh, graduate, uh, specialty in leadership. Uh, also another specialty is in criminal justice. So um, I also do uh, some expert testimony work, consultations, and um, things along those lines. I joint professor right now, some opportunities for other stuff that's coming up and all that, all that, all that. So uh, I want to talk to you all about uh, my journey in PhD land. And um, I wanted to focus today on uh, young men, in particular, young black men. Uh, there is a crisis. I'm going to try to put some, uh, I should be able to put some screenshots up here for you all to view. Uh, but there is a crisis among young men uh, going back to school and uh, achieving education because they don't think that there's anything in it. They're, they're wondering about the return on investment going into debt for 50, 60, 100, $120,000 uh, to get these different degrees. Um, and I wanted to talk about that uh, and what we can do in order to kind of fix this problem. Um, so in particular black men, but generally black, uh, but generally men of all stripes are, are really kind of foregoing education and, and all that. It's funny because I had planned to do this a while ago or, or today, excuse me, I planned to do this video a few days ago, I planned to do this video a few days ago and, um, just kind of think about it. So I came across some different information and then, then just today, early in the morning, I was at Walmart. And everybody, I think there was only two males in there who were working. Everybody else, all the stockers and uh, shelf stockers uh, and, um, you know, people just walking through the aisles. And this is early in the morning. This is when they first opened up, 7 a.m. All ladies, right? Many of them spoke Spanish. Uh, there was one Jamaican lady, right? So it's an interesting phenomenon when we talk about men leaving the workplace, right? So here's, you know, plenty of jobs to go around. What it, se it would seem to be plenty of jobs. But, you know, what is the return on investment? You know, is it worth getting out of the bed in the morning to work at a job uh, that is not going to pay you, uh, you know, a living wage that you can support your family, right? Because that's generally what men want to do. Uh, I know we're living in a day and time where we don't think that, but men really want to take care of their loved ones, take care of their family and be able to provide and be able to protect. So I think that's got to be one of the first things we have to do as a society. I know that this is a long shot, but we got to take a look at, you know, at what we're paying men and what we can do in order to get them to not only join the workforce, but what we can do in order to get them to want to go back to school to further their education so they can bring in a little bit more bacon. Right. Um, one of the reasons, another one of the reasons that I wanted to do this is because I really think it's important because I've had, you know, conversations with other, other young men, and this is going to be controversial what I'm going to say, but we have to, you know, in our efforts to be a diversified, strive for equity, inclusion, and someone even be, bring the B along there with, with belonging, right? D, DEI initiatives, and we don't know how long those are going to last, but let's just say that they last for, for quite some time. Um, in our efforts to do that, which totally justified, right? Everybody deserves to go to work. And when you get to work, you don't deserve to be picked on or harassed or excluded or whatever, right? Every, I, I think that, I think that that is a, that is a true statement. And it also has to be true of masculine men. And I think that we have to take a look at masculinity and what it means to be a masculine male in all these different types of work environments. I'm not talking about, and I really shouldn't have to say this, but I'm not talking about engaging in uh, sexual harassment or anything along those lines. I'm not talking about being able to do that. So if you're doing those types of things, then you are, you are the problem. Let's just, just, let us just be very clear about that. But I am talking about, when we talk about college education, you know, not seeing it as something that many masculine men do. And there's, there's, there's could be a number of reasons for that. And some of these things need to be worked out in academia. So, you know, I'm not an, I am not a, a scholar or an academic of, of, um, childhood education. 
In other words, right? I don't understand. I don't. I, I'm not an expert on um, pedagogy, right? How do how do people learn? In particular, how do young boys learn? That is not my my. I've read about it. I've read some articles about it, but I, I, I'm, that is not my forte and my expertise. I am an expert in how adults learn. I, I've taken PhD level classes about how adults learn. I have been an adult learner, so I've lived it and I've read about it, studied it, and understand it. So we might need to integrate those two those two fields, right? We ne we might need to understand that if young boys don't learn the same way as young girls, right? They're more rambunctious, they're more want to get out of their seats, right? Instead of instead of suspending them, instead of um, uh, uh, trying to saddle them down with, with drugs and Ritalin and all these other things that would calm them down to make them more palatable and more manageable within within the school environment, maybe, the, maybe what we should be doing is taking a look at how we can get them to uh, explore their rambunctious uh, behaviors in a learning group environment, outside, running around, learning by touching, feeling, play, etc. So that's something. And that same philosophy should probably go to edu educational system. Sitting down, whether you go to a traditional brick and mortar school or doing it online, maybe maybe we need to say, take a look at the reason that many boys or men don't go back to school is because they don't learn the same way even as adults. I know as, me, myself as an adult, like it's hard to, like I, I feel like I gotta be doing something all the time. I gotta be, feel, I feel like as if I gotta be doing something, reading something, doing something with my hands, and it's weird because I didn't always feel like that, but as an adult, I do. And so maybe we need to take the, what we understand about young boys and apply it to young men and say, okay, here's another way for you to get your degree. I know that some schools are actually doing that as far as um, competency-based education, right? Taking your work experience and then uh, applying that towards a degree because there's no, there's no better experience builder than, than actually working. Right. You can get your master's and PhD and all that. But if you, you know, some people never, ever leave the classroom. They go straight from from high school to college and they spend eight years in college, eight to 10 years in college, getting their PhD. And then they're going to go off into a university and then teach some more. And, but you have no work experience. You, you, you don't know what, what the real world is like. And I'm not talking about working at a bookstore, maybe working at a, uh, at a cafe, uh, making making sandwiches and mocha lattes. I'm not insulting that I did that as well. So I'm not talking about that. But, you know, in the real world environment where high stakes are, 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 are going on, and you know, that, that, that means something. Of course, yes, we understand that there's work study programs and that there are internships and all that. So, but I'm just saying we, we need to incorporate those things. We're trying to get men to, to, to further their education. We're trying to get men to further their education. So let me get back to the, the, the prospect of seeing masculine men in these places that's why i'm doing this video so you can see a man who's doing it who's not who's unapologetically black who's unapologetically masculine in in my presentation and this is not to down anyone else and this is not to inhibit anyone else but but if we're going to talk about diversity inclusion equity and belonging then we have to talk about creating a safe space Four straight males of all uh, colors and creeds. I think that, that that is important. And more professors who are straight and male need to be um, promoted, put, propped up, put on, put on display. Hey, we support all aspects and facets of life. And I, it's not fair that we that we talk about supporting all aspects and facets of life except for straight males, all right? So I think that that that, that is uh, something that we need to really really have a conversation about. So those are and, and the last thing that we need to do is take a look at society and make sure that there is a return on investment for all people who go to college and, and educate themselves, right? There's no need to go to college and rack up one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of student debt, and you can't get a job after. Or the job that you get. What's going on up here? Or the job that you get, um, you know, is 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 not doing doing whatever, uh, and not meeting the bills and all that. So these are conversations that we need to have. We need, really need to think about. Um, I know that they wanted to really kind of focus on online work, 
working from home, but there's a lot of uh, companies that want to go back to um, making sure that people are home, excuse me, going back to the office. They want us to go back to the office, go back to the office, you know, whether it's to save um, the uh, real estate, you know, because people purchase and, and all the, you know, there's all these different kind of theories about why they want to bring people back to the office. So I, just, these are just some of the ideas that I have about how we can get men to really um, get back into being interested in school. And uh, I listen to a lot of uh, other smart brothers and they talk about um, uh, women, uh, ladies, particularly single mothers, who uh, do not push for their boys to go to school. In particular, yes, black, young black boys, they do not push that. They push the girls to do it because they say, listen, you wanna grow up, make sure that you are able to, uh, if you get a man who doesn't provide, um, that you are able to provide for yourself. Get your education first and then you look for a man later on. But that same type of pushing, same type of uh, encouragement to educate the girls ought to be put into the boys because who are the girls going to find later on in life if you're not if you're not pushing the boys to do it? So yes, we should push the boys to uh, go to school, become the best versions of themselves, to exercise discipline, self-control, um, the ability to uh, uh, what's that term? You know, make sure um, to uh, put um, what's that term? Put things off, uh, delayed gratification. Jeez. <laughs> right, that the idea of delayed gratification needs to be taught in young, young men, and young black men in particular. Right, so, and so, it's just as strongly as you're pushing your son, excuse me, it's just as strongly as you're pushing your daughter to go back to to finish school. Don't become distracted by boys. Don't get pregnant. Don't you know all this other stuff, so they can have the best chance of success at a successful life. The same type of energy needs to be placed into boys to tell them. Become something of yourself. Put your time, energy, and effort into education, into your books. Let's find a different way for, for them to be educated and to be encouraged about it, right? So all these things need to be looked at. So we need to take a look at it as a society as a whole, our return on investment, making sure that there's jobs, and cr creating inclusive environments for young, straight, black boys and all males to uh, be want to go to school. Again, return on investment in that is extremely important. We need to take a look at you know how we're educating our young black men from a young age, and see if that needs to be done into in more in acad in academia. I do appreciate those schools that are putting out competency based and work based experience. I think that's important. Um, and then of course advocating for our young men, and that includes pushing them to become. Uh, uh, at young ages, the, the importance of education, and of course, showing them videos like this and saying, hey, listen, don't you want to be like this brother right here who was a police officer, who went back to school when he was an adult, got his education, and now he's a PhD? Or point, to the, point them to another PhD who did it straight out of school. Hey, listen, this person went straight to school, got their education, and now they're you know, a pharmacist, now they're uh, a mechanical engineer, now they're a neurophysicist, whatever right push 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 the importance of education the importance of seeing young black men uh or, or older mature black men who have made it who did these things and made the sacrifice push the idea of de delayed gratification push the idea of the importance of education and all that so let me know your thoughts and your opinions did i miss anything in my in my uh in my tirade here about uh, the importance of education, the importance of getting men back to be in school. If, if the women, if you want your children, your daughters to marry someone, you have to push your boys to do it. You have to push your boys to do it. They're not, you, you, you cannot expect a boy who was not pushed, education uh, was not important to them. They didn't think that he could do it, didn't think he was fast enough, didn't uh, by mentally fast enough, thought it was mentally slow, learned a different way. If you didn't think that it was important for him to push it, what do you expect for that person to grow up? He's not going to grow up and automatically become this, this person uh, who is uh, equipped to to function in society, particularly as a husband. You want a six-figure earner? 
as a whatever it's going to be in you know 10 years you know 100 whatever you want that type of earner then you have to produce that and that men have to be made men have to be made not males men who are go out there protect provide for their families go out there and and, and are uh, contributing to society who can give back to the communities who can speak well hold the conversation who are emotionally and and, and mentally intelligent they have to be made they have to be made and it's going to take us to make them let me know your thoughts and your opinions make sure you rate subscribe and share check out my other podcast lmh consulting services and also check out captain hunter's podcast where i do talk more about men's issues but i thought that this should be on the phd channel as well much love and peace